Okay, uh, welcome to the experiment, uh, lab 6 or lab 11, depending on the class, but it's the reaction of magnesium with hydrochloric acid. Uh, in this lab, we take a very small piece of magnesium metal. It's a little strip that weighs about uh, 30 or 40 milligrams. We allow it to react with excess hydrochloric acid. Uh, the, the reaction proceeds and we have a, um, soluble magnesium chloride and bubbles of hydrogen gas. And the nice thing about this experiment is that to uh, figure out how many moles of magnesium we have, we use the periodic table and do a gram to mole conversion. To figure out the moles of hydrogen, we use the ideal gas law and solve it for the number of moles based on the volume and the pressure and temperature. The reaction says that uh, the stoichiometry is one to one. So um, again, using very independent things, mass on one side and volume on the other, we can see that this experiment does what it is supposed to have done. All right, the experiment is, um, like I said, it's a, it's a nice one. It's very clean. Uh, what we do is we set ourselves up with a gas collecting apparatus, a little fancier than this, but basically we have a solution of water and then in the test tube water and hydrochloric acid, and at the bottom of the test tube, down where we can't see it, uh, we have the little piece of magnesium, and as the reaction proceeds, the bubbles of hydrogen go to the top of the test tube, uh, and that displaces water until the reaction stops, and then our job is to read exactly what this uh, level of gas is. The actual device is a gas collecting tube. It's marked off like a graduated cylinder, and so you're able to very precisely read how much hydrogen is collected, and we'll do that for you in the first uh, step. Okay. So collecting the data, uh, here's some contrived data. Um, and what we're gonna do is just run through uh, the mass of magnesium uh, for trial one, 0 0.0365 grams. Go ahead and write that on your data sheet. Um, pause as you need. The volume of collected gas is 36.21 mils. And recognize this gas is not just hydrogen, but it's also water vapor because the hydrogen has bubbled through that test tube full of water. So yeah, that's the volume, but it's a mixture of things. Uh, the temperature in the room uh, the day we did the lab was 20 degrees Celsius. The barometric pressure is 745.2 torr. One torr is one millimeter mercury, so we can also call it um, 745.2 millimeters mercury, but since we're asking for torr, we'll stick to torr there. And then the water vapor pressure is something we look up based on the temperature. So if we were to do a Google or whatever Wikipedia search uh, and find the vapor pressure of water as a function of temperature at 20 degrees, the water vapor pressure is 17.5. Um, as the temperature rises, this pressure rises, ultimately causing boiling um, when you exceed atmospheric pressure. All right, so there's our data. Uh, make sure that's copied down, and then we'll get into the calculations for this lab. Okay, um, maybe zoom out just a touch. Okay, um, so using the... Um, measured mass of magnesium of 0 0.0365 grams. We're again doing a gram to mole conversion. I like to see road maps everywhere. Uh, and that's just dividing by the molar mass and we get 0 0.0015 moles of uh, magnesium. Okay, the conversion of Celsius into Kelvin is we take the temperature in Celsius and we add 273 Kelvin. Uh, I didn't write it down, but uh, it was 20 degrees, 20 and 273 is 293 Kelvin. Volume of dry gas at STP. This one gets um, a little bit trickier. So mainly we're using the combined gas law. And the combined gas law is P1V1 over T1 is P2V2 over T2. The convention is that the ones are the original conditions, so that's our experimental conditions, and the twos are what we're converting to, or the secondary conditions. So we're converting to STP. So really what we want to find is this V2. We want to find the volume of dry gas if it were at STP. So we've got two things or three things we have to do. We have to correct for the temperature and pressure, which are not STP conditions, 
And we also have to correct for the fact that the uh, hydrogen is not pure. So my, my P1 uh, is going to be the experimental uh, concentration of hydrogen, uh, pressure rather, not concentration. Okay, and Dalton's law is that the total pressure is the sum of the pieces. So if P total is equal to pH2O and pH2, then I can rearrange and say pH2 would be P total minus pH2O. Um, make sure you're comfortable with that. Um, it's sort of important for this lab. All right, so that's going to be our P1. Um, going back to the combined gas law, we solved for V2, uh, just rearranging these pieces. So I have my P1, V1 over T1 times the P2, um, T2 inverted. And then I just plug in the numbers. And so I had my 727.7 um, torr, which is my <clears throat> pressure of hydrogen. I have my collected volume of 36.21 mils, my room temperature, uh, experimental temperature of 292 Kelvin, and then I'm correcting by the STP 273 Kelvin and 760 torr, or one atmosphere, and I come up with 32.30 mils. So what this is telling me is that originally I had 36 mils, that's what I actually collected, but if I were to remove the water from it, and now that gas will shrink a little bit, and I were to cool it from 20 degrees Kelvin to zero Kelvin, and increase the pressure from 727 torr to 760 torr, this 36.2 mils turns into 32.3 mL. So that's the, the STP volume of that gas, um, of the hydrogen gas that I collected. All right, next on the list, uh, we want to calculate the, uh, uh, the ratio. Oops, sorry, huh, I got way off here. This 32.3 goes up here. And the moles of hydrogen, that's what happens when I run out of space here, the moles of hydrogen is found from the ideal gas law. So I'll take my ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, solve for N, substitute in STP conditions. So since I've already calculated everything in STP, I'll just use those. So again, N is going to be pressure times volume over uh, R times T. That's one atmosphere times my dry volume, 32.3 mLs. I need that in liters, so I convert to liters. R is 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin and the STP temperature is 273 Kelvin, so this gives me 0 0.00144 moles of hydrogen. Sorry for that uh, sloppiness there. Okay, next we're supposed to calculate <clears throat> the liters of hydrogen per mole of magnesium, and that's just what it says. So I'm gonna calculate the liters of hydrogen that I calculated um, my volume of dry gas at STP, again converted to liters. I'm going to divide that by the moles of magnesium, which is the very first thing I calculated on this page, and I come up with 21.53 liters of hydrogen per mole of magnesium. Okay, so this is my experimental, and again, that's what I actually determined in the lab. Next, we're asked to do the theoretical volume, and this one is based on uh, if I had a mole of magnesium, what volume of hydrogen at STB can be produced? And what's key here is one mole of magnesium gives you one mole of hydrogen. That was our balanced reaction to start with. So my theoretical volume then is just again taking the ideal gas law, uh, solving for volume, so now I have nRT over P, uh, and that will be uh, one mole times 0.0821 times the 273 Kelvin divided by the one atmosphere. Units all work out and I get 22.41 liters. Now this was volume per mole, so it's liters per mole here. Maybe I'm being a little cavalier with the units, but I get 22.41. And this is the molar volume of an ideal gas. If you go on to take 111, you'll look at this a little harder, but for us, that's what one liter of gas at STP uh, occupies. Okay, so we see that um, those were close. 21.53. So we had 21.53 experimentally. We calculated a theoretical of 22.41, not dead on, but fairly close. Uh, and then lastly, we want to have a definition of how, how well this lab worked, uh, and that's our percent yield of hydrogen, which we are defining as the experimental yield dividing by the theoretical yield. 
And for my numbers, I had 21.53 liters per mole divided by 22.41 liters per mole, which gave me a 96.1% uh, recovery there. And actually doing this lab, um, typically the results probably two-thirds plus of students are within a percent of 100. Uh, it seems we're maybe just a little bit above 100, you know, like the average is 100.5 or something. But again, the experiment works very, very well. Okay, so um, there we have it. Um, and again, I think the, the great thing of this lab is independently calculating moles from experimental data that we had the, um, again, the uh, using the mass of magnesium to calculate moles and the volume of the gas to calculate moles, and we can compare those. All right, hopefully that's clear. Um, last word of advice is make sure you show the equations every opportunity you have. Make sure that you've got the units um, sketched in there wherever possible. And um, do it on scratch paper first so you don't make a mess like I did. All right, that's it. Thanks.